It's okay. A very, very good morning to all of you and very warm welcome and uh, please do join us and uh, take your seats as well. We're just about to start. You're yeah, most welcome. Yeah. Can I invite us all to stand? The Lord be with you. We say together the colleague for purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, the Lord our God is the only Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us and write all these laws in our hearts. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all men. Let us sit or kneel as we are able as we enter in time of confession. We pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Receive now the absolution. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It's God's uh, forgiven people. Let us now rise to our feet and as the worship team now lead us in a time of praise and worship. Morning, everybody. Let's um, all come together and bless the Lord with our voices today. Be your name in the lightest land. The shoes of the blinders roll. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Revolved in the desert place. For all true love will turn us. Blessed be your name.
said be your name when the sun shining down on you when the rose all as it should be let's be said be your name on the road marked with sunburn
for your goodness. Thank you for your love that is always chasing after us, Lord, even though we may turn away from you. But you still accept us and you ask us to come into your loving arms.
for the way that you continue to work in our lives and the good work that you began, that you will continue to bring it to completion to the glory of your name. Thank you for the cross and the finished work and all that uh, you're doing through, uh, uh, in, in our midst as well, in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated for the first scripture reading. First reading today is from Romans 13, verse 8 uh, to 14. Romans uh, chapter 13, verse 8 to 14. Owe no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Psalm 34. Of David, when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, so that he drove him out and he went away. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and delivers them. O taste! And see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. O fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is there who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are towards the righteous and his ears toward their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the memory of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones, not one of them is broken. Affliction will slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. Lord, as we come before your word this uh, morning, enable us to taste and see the goodness of the Lord and in turn to share this with others around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Do you know that uh, many of our churches are known by the food they serve? I think a Holy Trinity Church is no exception. And in fact, Deborah and I have come to discover some of the delightful specialities here. There is Siok Du Chi Pao Kai. She's not here this morning. But <laughs> I'm sure you would have. How many of you have heard of her, her paper wrapped chicken? Chi Pao Kai, see? All right. And then, of course, uh, Catherine's, uh, Catherine Chong's uh, Ang Jiao Kui, you know, the red ye- uh, wine chicken, just to name two. Yeah? Of course, there is the famous uh, Chok. Eh? No joke. Eh? That is served at the Sunday breakfast in the fellowship hall. If you come earlier, uh, before the service, and you go to the fellowship hall, from time to time, you get a, a wonderful serving of that. And I think uh, most of us do not seem to get enough of that. (laughs) One has to taste and see that they are good. (laughs) 
Well, the surrounding area where our church is located is well known as a foodie area. Did you all know that? No, not convinced. Uh. Go and check it out. Uh. Yesterday, in fact, our youths, uh, our youths went on this uh, combined activity with Church of True Light, and which included exploring the food trail from Hamilton Road to Perak Road, where True Light is located. Did you all know that? Yeah. I see JJ nodding. He knows his food. Yeah. I'll spare you the details. By the way, for those of you who like, how many of you like nasi lemak here? Okay, good. For those of you who like your nasi lemak, you may like to know that Wow Coco from McNair Road is locating the 14 Hamilton Road uh, next week. Uh, I don't have a share in the company. But I do like nasi lemak. Anyway. Good things must share. Am I right? Good things must share. Huh? Friends, when it comes to the wonderful experiences of the Lord or insights into our relationship with Him, shouldn't we want to share that also? Well, on Tuesday night, I also uh, attended a uh, Zoom uh, conference uh, where Archbishop Melter, who is the Archbishop of the province of Southeast Asia, uh, shared and spoke about what is called Mission 113. How many of you have heard of Mission 113? Only my wife. Now, this strategy was introduced and implemented by the late Archbishop Yong Ping Chung when he became the Bishop of the Diocese of Sabah in the, and, and in the 90s. And this resulted in significant evangelistic outreach, disciple-making, and church growth. Did you know that during that entire 16-year period, there were some 22 new churches that were birthed and established as a result of this Mission 113? It's a very simple and doable approach which I believe everyone young and old can actually employ and make use of. And this has now spread to many countries abroad, in the Middle East, in Africa, in America, in Canada, and so on. I'll share more about this wonderful concept and strategy in my conclusion. It is truly something delightful and good. Good things must share, right? <laughs> and as we look at today's psalm, Psalm 34, there is something good that the psalmist wished to share. And this is none other than his own experience and relationship with the Lord. And the listener is invited to taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen? It invites the listener to experience the Lord in a very real and a very personal and tangible manner. You know, God is not someone who is distant, someone abstract and impersonal, and for us to philosophize over and analyze and study. He is real. And he wants to relate with us. And he is actually very, very much involved in all that is going on in this world as well as in individuals' lives. The only trouble is that many of us are rather insensitive and, and not aware that he's actually actively involved and engaged yeah, with what, he, what is going on with us. And the psalmist, this is none other than King David himself, was writing at a time after he had escaped Abimelech after feigning madness. He had to pretend to be mad in order to escape this uh, foreign king because his, he was in a tough situation. His life was in mortal danger. And Abimelech was probably a title given to rulers uh, among the Philistines. The ruler's proper name was Achish. You can read about that in 1 Samuel 21. And David at that time was also running away from his own king, King Saul. You know? So from one king to another king. You know? You know, it was uh, like from the frying pan into the fire, yeah, one might say. And David himself narrowly escaped as he could not find safe haven in the Philistine territory. And we read all about this in, again, 1 Samuel 21 to 22. And having escaped, David went to this place, which is called the Cave of Adullam, where he was joined by his brothers and all who were in his father's house. So all of them came to him. There were many others who came as well, uh, people whom we may call riffraffs, you know, as 1 Samuel 22 verse 1 to 2 would say, everyone who was in distress and everyone who was in debt and everyone who was bitter in soul gathered to him. What kind of people are these? 
It's like they are, sorry to use the expression, like a, a, a very hopeless lot, you know, full of problems, full of trouble, and they came to him. And he became what? Captain over them. Huh? Wow, to lead such a motley crew. And there were with him about 400 men. And the numbers didn't include women and children. 400 men. More than our uh, church congregation numbers, you know. The general view is that this psalm was written from that cave. And it was sung in the presence of those men. It nonetheless was filled with joy and wisdom. The structure of this psalm is called what is called an acrostic, or nearly so. Each verse begins with another letter of the Hebrew alphabet. The first verse is Aleph, and then Beth, then Daleth, then Gimel, and so on and so forth. The purpose of the acrostic format in this psalm is to help you be used as a device to encourage learning and memorization. Yeah. There was some funny ditty, A is for apple, B is for boy, and C is for whatever, you know. It's that sort of a thing, you know. So let us now take a closer look at this psalm and see what we may be able to, what wisdom we may be able to learn to enable us to experience God in a very real and tangible manner. The psalmist begins with praise and blessing to God. In verse 1 to 3, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt His name together. Not at all surprising. After all, God's faithful people are called to always rejoice and give thanks to the Lord in whatever circumstance they may be in. Well, it's against the usual tendency when we're in trouble, we're in distress. You know, we, we tend to complain. We tend to complain about things being unfavorable, things being difficult, and so on, so stressful, you know. But here there seems to be an intentional, counterintuitive response that it was being made. It was deliberate. It's, it's radical. It appears even illogical. Why should one rejoice when one is uh, facing all these problems, or well, in trouble, or powerless and helpless to sort things out or resolve uh, the matter? Well, therein lies the answer. When we have come to the end of ourselves, we begin to become perhaps more open and receptive uh, to the things that God can do. You know, oftentimes when we have a problem, what do we, the natural thing for us is we try to solve the problem ourselves. Or we get somebody's help and so on and so forth. But then when we come to the end of it and then, well, no solution, maybe you say, okay, God, I need your help. We always tend to turn to the Lord <laughs> as the place of last resort when we should have come to Him in the first place. But herein is the situation. The people are all, you know, in distress, powerless, and so on. And so, David reminded them to rejoice, to boast in the Lord, to exalt His name together with Him. Yeah. In verse 4 to 7, the psalmist said, He sought the Lord. And what did the Lord do? The Lord answered him. And the Lord delivered him from all his fears. What a wonderful blessing. And he testified that those who looked to the Lord would never be ashamed. And besides attesting to his own experience, there is perhaps a reference to Moses, who kept, when, whenever he met with the Lord uh, to, to seek his face, to, to bring before him uh, the, the needs of the people, and when he was in conversation with the Lord, when he came out from God's presence, we are told that his face was radiant. Uh, so not radiant, radiant chua, but I shine for Jesus. Eh? Uh, basically, he was radiant when he came out from his time of meeting with the Lord. Anybody who has met with the Lord, you cannot possibly come out depressed. If so, then something is wrong. Right? Whenever we have met with the Lord, we have truly encountered Him, and when we come out from His presence, we should be filled with joy. Hallelujah! <laughs> I hope that at the end of the service, when we all leave the church, uh, we all leave here smiling and not, oh, what a service. <laughs> what a meeting with God. 
I hope not. You know? If there is, may I humbly ask that, uh, I, I, that I may pray with you. <laughs> you know, this is our ministry, right? To pray and lift up and encourage each other. Amen? Amen? That's what it's all about. Otherwise, why come to church every week to get depressed? No, I hope not. Okay? To get lifted up. Amen? Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. And of course, not only was there uh, that, that experience, there was also the promise of supernatural protection. Verse 7, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and deliverance. And he delivered them. In verse 8, we see a most remarkable invitation, st uh, st statement. Yeah. It, is an invitation, uh, is a, it is an invitation the psalmist made to his audience to taste and see that the Lord is good. This is not some feel-good thing, you know, that the psalmist uh, decided to just uh, throw in and make people feel happy and so on. He was actually explaining that, hey, it's true, you know. If you taste and see the good, that, that uh, you know, the Lord, you, you'll find that He is good. And he was sharing from his own personal experience of God. Whenever he, 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 he took refuge in the Lord, whenever he cried out to the Lord, the Lord was there. He was with him. He answered him. Yeah? If truly this psalm was written in celebration and commemoration of David's deliverance from the hands of Akish, as recorded in 1 Samuel, then all the more at Adullam, his very intact physical well-being bore witness to that. Look at me. I, I trusted the Lord. And I took refuge in the Lord. I cried out to, the God, to God. I was in a fix. And guess what? The Lord delivered me. Look at me. I'm fine. What a testimony. In verse 9 to 14, the psalmist made the call to his listeners to do what he did. That was to fear the Lord. Fear the Lord has to do with reverencing God, knowing who God is and who you are. If you know who you are, you know, if you know who God is, you cannot possibly but revere God because He's almighty. And this was the smart move. Again, in the context of the cave at Adullam, he was speaking to some 400 men, all of them very downhearted, downcast, crushed, broken people. But he tells them to fear the Lord. Fearing the Lord is the wise thing to do, the smart move. This was the word of wisdom to them. Start with God. Know who God is. And if you know who He is, you will fear, who, fear Him. Holy fear. The psalmist was exhorting his listeners to have the right perspective of their situation, of their circumstance. And while some who were present then may be tempted with the notion, hey, there are quite a number of us, you know, 400 men. And, and David, uh, you know, Saul slew his uh, 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 hundreds or thousands, and then you slew 10,000. Wow, we are following you. You are our captain. You will lead us to victory. We follow you. But then David was telling them, no. This will not be wise. It will be futile. Futile, verse 10. Instead, those who fear the Lord, he told them, will not lack anything. He asked them to turn away from evil, verse 13 and 14, whether in their, in the things they say or the things they do. He asked them instead to do good, to seek peace and pursue that instead. This call was made to the faithful, verse 9, possibly the older ones, and also to the younger ones, the young lions, or some what we call the eager beavers, you know, and even those who were children uh, in their midst, the young, younger people. In verse 15 to 22, the psalmist affirmed that the Lord cared for those who put their trust in Him. The brokenhearted, the crushed in spirit, will not be forsaken, but be comforted and saved. He was addressing these very same people, who were broken people, who were crushed in their spirits. And he is telling them, the Lord will comfort you, the Lord will save you, the Lord will not abandon you. And while the righteous, he is telling them, may experience much affliction, maybe you are righteous, that's why you are experiencing all this, the Lord will deliver you from them all. You will not come to any harm. Your life will be preserved. Isn't that wonderful? These are not just past platitudes. These are real experiences that David is sharing with them. On the other hand, the wicked and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. God's servants, even those who took refuge in the Lord, will be kept safe. 
and redeemed. And like the psalmist, they too will experience God's goodness. Hallelujah. I'll taste and see that the Lord is good. Friends, from the psalm, one of the interesting points that is often missed is how various descriptions are used to characterize the conduct and actions of the person whom God has regard of and responds to. Who is the person that God would respond to? Who is the one that God will, will take notice of or will act or, or respond to? And what the Lord does is He will save. That He will deliver. He will provide. He will protect. He will preserve. And this is uh, what God will do. The one who takes refuge in the Lord, this is what God will do. Right? In this psalm, we learn also that such a person is one who worships God. Verse 1 to 3, he blesses the Lord. He praises the Lord continually. He boasts in the Lord. He magnifies the Lord. He exalts the name of the Lord. He's one who seeks the Lord. He's not passive. He's active. He looks to the Lord. He doesn't look to, to, to you know, man. He looks to the Lord. He cries out to the Lord for help. He fears the Lord. And such a person takes refuge in the Lord. This is the person whom God regards. This is the one whom God will respond to. And he's considered righteous by doing all this. Indeed, the righteous will experience more than their fair share of trouble. In fact, verse 19 says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. However, however, the amazing and wonderful thing is that the Lord will deliver him from harm even as he takes refuge in the Lord. Conversely, those who hate the righteous will be condemned and the wicked will perish, verse 21. The other thing that, that we see here is, is how God describes them as his servants. Now, it is one thing to think of ourselves as, uh, of one another as God's servants. But it's quite a different thing altogether if it is the Lord himself who actually acknowledges us as his servants. Why? Well, because this comes, from, this comes with his authority and his endorsement, if you like to put it that way. You know, in the old days, uh, nowadays, uh, uh, we use the term civil servants. In the old days, we call them what? Government servants. Am I right? Am I right? They're called government servants, right? Yeah, maybe not very civil, but now there's more civil. I don't know what's the reason. Never mind if, if that person who is a government servant is holding just a very lowly uh, clerical position in the department. Should anyone there contemplate speaking disrespectfully or rudely to any one of them, that would be it. Whatever the, your request is, whatever they have put in as a file and uh, a file in and so on, will never see the light of day. Am I right? Anyone have experienced that before? Uh, those of us who come from Malaysia probably a lot more. <laughs> I came from Malaysia, so I know. Right? The disrespect shown is not so much to that person as they are to the authority whom he or she has been appointed to represent. On another vein, to be called God's servants involves us acting in accordance with God's will and purposes. And as faithful servants, we are doing what God wants on earth as it is in heaven. We are doing God's will. We can only do what will honour our master and, and serve his purposes. We are acting under authority. We, we cannot just do willy-nilly, oh, because I'm so and so, therefore I do what I like. No, it's, it's never like that. In any government, in any authority structure, you are always doing what you're authorised to do. No more, no less. And of course, the good name of the Lord is hallowed and revered through our speech and through our conduct. His glory is revealed. For those of us who are God's servants, who represent God, we have to watch what we say, how we say things. Nowadays, there are a lot of things that are being said which are very crude and very rude. I don't think we should uh, you know, pay, uh, use our lips to say those things at all. Right? I was very shocked by some of the things that sometimes I watch on TikTok. How many of you watch TikTok here? Well, the rest of you don't. Eh? You sure not? 
And that's one of the things that are being said that the, 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 foul, the foulness of the language used uh, is, is truly, uh, uh, to me, is distressing. And then it's not being normalized. Uh. If you're not too careful, you'll find that it's all being normalized and it becomes part of your speech and the words that you use. Be very careful. Watch, watch what we say. With our mouth, we glorify God. And let us, let us do so with sanctified lips before God. Being God's servants come not only with authorization, but also His protection. Yes, the Lord will, empower, will, will appoint us, but He will also protect us. So long as we act within the boundaries of our God-given authority. And thus the Lord redeems the life of His servants. Verse 22, none of those who take refuge in Him will be condemned. And so if we desire for God to regard us as his servant and enjoy the benefits and blessings of that, then we follow the psalmist's action and instructions. What do we do? We worship the Lord. We seek his face. We look to the Lord. We cry out to the Lord for help. We fear the Lord. We take refuge in the Lord. And as we do so faithfully, joyfully and wholeheartedly, not only will we taste and see that the Lord is good, others around us will also be able to taste and see no less. They too can taste and will see that the Lord is good through us, you and I, to the glory of His name. You know, during communion later on, you'll find that there's a phrase that we use. It says, it is our duty and our joy at all times, in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King. Am I right? Duty and joy. You know, sometimes in terms of our approach to our Christian faith or duties, how, how, do, we, how do we approach it? Do we do it with, with the joy of the Lord? Do we embrace it and see this as part of our calling? Or do we do so with a sense, I, uh, no choice I've got to do, uh, it's my duty. Uh, you know? I'm on duty today, uh, you know, but I really don't want to do this. Uh, but no choice. Uh. You have a choice. And the choice is to embrace it, what God has given to you, what God has entrusted you with. And when you do that with joy in your heart, you're blessed. You will experience the goodness of God when, you do, when duty and joy meet. Therein lies the blessing. Therein is your blessing. Don't miss out. After all, nowadays, everybody for more, right? Don't miss out on this one, Okay? So in conclusion, may I ask, have you tasted? Have you tasted and seen the goodness of the Lord? If so, never, never, let us never lose that joy and that blessing of what it is to taste and know what the goodness of the Lord is. And having experienced and tasted the goodness of the Lord, surely it will be a shame to just keep this to ourselves. The Lord is good. His mercies are forever, but it's not only for us to experience and enjoy. It's meant to be shared and passed on to others so that they too may taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen? Can you turn to the person next to you and say, taste and see that the Lord is good? Let's tell somebody today, to taste and see that the Lord is good. Let us tell somebody today to taste and see that the Lord is good. Friends, we have tasted so, so much, so much of the goodness of the Lord, from His salvation to His protection, from His provision to His deliverance, to His merciful intervention, from His mercies to His loving kindness, from His grace to His steadfast love, from His overflowing joy to his abiding peace in the midst of the storms of life. There's so much more. His assurance, his comfort, his constant presence in times of sorrow and grief, his guidance, his direction, his faithful leading in times of uncertainty and doubt, and, and much more. Much more. Let us learn to share these blessings, the goodness of God, <laughs> to others around us. And as I had promised, at the beginning of the sermon, I'm going to share a little bit more about Mission 113. What this means and how we may be able to use this simple but effective way to reach out with the love and good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Mission 113 is about every believer, every one of us, bringing another person to become a believer every three days. No, every three years. Okay. I think three days is a bit tough. Lah, huh? Three years! Is that difficult? Is that too high a goal? Is that uh, something that's beyond us? Do you, think, do you think it's achievable? I believe it is. And after the person you brought to Christ, thereafter, for three years, that means all together six, eh? you will be responsible as a Christian for that new Christian until they can stand and walk for themselves. One, one, three. Well, you have three years to just bring one person to Christ. I don't think that's too tall an order. Of course, you need to prayerfully ask the Lord who this person may be and begin to do so. Now, in the first year, what you do is that, well, you, you make the effort to know that person. This involves uh, building friendship. Be genuine. Be real. Be, be authentic. Because, you know, you make friends uh, with that person and you take a genuine interest in their lives and their well-being. This is a form of what's called friendship evangelism. In the second year, you begin to share Christ with that person through your life. This may be through sharing your own experience of God or answered prayers in your life and so on. Your life as a, as a Christian itself becomes your witness. This may also involve inviting you know, uh, this person to some spe special celebration event or occasion at your home or cell group or as in the church, like our uh, uh, mid-autumn outreach on the 30th of September. See, this is my pitch. All right. Use this opportunity to reach out and bring that person here and let them experience and taste not just the mooncake and the food, but also to experience the love and the goodness of God. Through us, through you, through me, through all of us. In the third year, you can begin bringing that person to faith through inviting them perhaps to an Alpha course or Christianity Explored or to an evangelistic Bible study or even to a church service if they're open to that. And you may also involve others, other friends, to engage that person in conversation about the Christian faith because you may not have all the answers. Yeah. Somebody else may be able to throw in some insight that will help. So in a, nutshell, in a nutshell, for the first year, the word is knowing, knowing that person. Second year is sharing, sharing with that person. And third year, bringing, bringing that person to Christ. Knowing, sharing, and bringing. Turn to the person next to you and say, knowing, sharing, and bringing. Knowing, sharing, and bringing. One, one, three. Okay? That's what Mission 113 is. Yeah? And friends, in the experience of the Diocese of Saba, the idea was that if their people could fulfill this undertaking, they would double their attendance every three years. Did you know that? That was the goal. But in the end, their growth was not as fast as they had hoped for and aimed for, but they did double their attendance after about 10 years, from 9,000 to 18,000. And 22 new churches were birthed and established as a result. Brothers and sisters, as part of our church's vision, we seek to fulfill the Great Commission in the power of the Holy Spirit. Am I right? That's part of our vision, correct? First is to be a caring community, correct? That's what we are, right? And as we seek to fulfill our church's vision in relation to the Great Commission, let us consider, maybe consider Mission 113 as one strategic approach. After all, it has been well tested and proven and to bring people to taste and see the goodness of the Lord. May those who then take refuge in the Lord through faith in Christ be subsequently and eternally blessed. For those who have tasted the goodness of the Lord already, let us then ask the Lord how we can share this with others around us. But for those, if there is any in our midst this, uh, this afternoon that you have yet to taste the goodness of God, well, what are you waiting for? Ask the person next to you 
to help you experience what that is about. Amen? Amen? The Lord is good. Today can be your blessed day. Today can be your day. Don't miss out on the blessing and the goodness of God. I say this with all love and with all sincerity. You know, God has so much in store for each and every one of us. And for those who have yet to come into His kingdom, don't delay, don't, don't defer. Allow the Lord to have His way. And let Him show you. Let Him show you how you can live life to its fullest intended possible. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank You because You are the author of life and You are also the author of salvation. And as surely as you have prepared the way for us to come to you, enable us, Lord, to experience your goodness and in turn to share this goodness with those around us. And help us always, Lord, to remember that every good and perfect gift comes from you in whom there is no shadow of change. We ask and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In the words of the Apostles' Creed, and these are not just uh, uh, statements uh, to, to, for us to just uh, pay lip service to, but this is actually statements of what we believe and through which we can share uh, with those around us so that they too may experience uh, the fullness of God's blessings for their lives. Let's say these together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. We collect for the 14th Sunday after Trinity. We pray together. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all, govern the hearts and minds of those in authority, and bring the families of the nations, divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin, to be subject to his just and gentle rule, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray the prayer seats together. Father God, there is no one besides you. You alone are holy and worthy of praise. Thank you for being my rock and firm foundation upon which I can build my life. You are always faithful and unchanging. I can always put my trust in you. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let us sit on you as we enter now in the time of intercession. Let us pray together. As we begin, I would like to invite you to call to mind someone whom you know who might be broken-hearted or crushed in spirit. Please name them before the Lord so that we can pray together for them. Lord, we lift to you those who are ill, those who have just had bad news, those who are lonely, those who are scared, those who are waiting for rescue, those who are heartbroken and those who are grieving, those who are hurting. Lord, you have placed certain people in our lives with needs that we, we don't even know how to describe. But Lord, we pray that you will be close to them because you are near to the brokenhearted and you will save those crushed in spirit. And Lord, please use us to be the friend who is a blessing to them. Help us to be the friend who can bring comfort and give us an opportunity.
to share the life-changing news of Jesus Christ with those in our lives. Let's continue to pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for gathering us all here this morning, and I thank you that together we can exalt your name. I thank you especially for those of my brothers and sisters who've had a bad week and had to make an extra effort to be here this morning. And we thank you for the grace and the strength you've provided to each of us. Lord, as we open the newspapers and we read of all that's happening in the world, we want to pray especially this morning for those in Morocco and those in Hong Kong who are suffering from the earthquake and the floods. Lord, as they wait for rescue, as they are injured and hurting, and as the situation looks hopeless, Lord, we cry to you because that's all we can do from here. But Lord, we know that you will not ignore their plight. And we pray especially for Christians in these areas to to have faith in you so that they can be generous and so that they can help. We pray for international aid to reach quickly so that those who are waiting for relief may find it. Lord, we ask that you will send relief, comfort and help to those who are suffering. Please rescue and deliver them from their troubles. And Lord, as Christians step up to help, we pray that this will reveal the gospel of Christ. And through actions and words, may the good news of Jesus be faithfully proclaimed, even in these dire circumstances. And we pray, Lord, that you have mercy and grant time so that more can come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Lord, nearer to home, we want to continue to pray for Singapore. And this morning, we pray especially for churches and Christian families that we may walk in integrity and uprightness and not fall prey to moral corruption or greed. Please help us all to remain faithful to the teaching of God's word and be good witnesses, good workers of the Lord in every sphere of life in society. Lord, as the children return to school this week, we want to pray especially for those who are taking major exams. We pray for uh, the PSLE children in our church, Brian, Jayakuma, Karen, Joel and Michaela. We pray for those taking the O-levels, Chloe Chang, Elroy, Jedediah Jordan, and for Jire, who's taking her A-levels. We pray that they are all working hard, and we pray that you will help their hard work to bear fruit. Please grant them wisdom to manage their time and give them good health as they uh, battle all this stress. We pray that they and all their friends have good health, and we pray, Lord, that our children will have peace and comfort and assurance in you at all times. Um, As parents, help us to be gracious and to have the wisdom and strength to support our children. Lord, we pray that as our children walk into the exam hall, they do not feel alone. And in their anxiety, help them to look to you. Help them to know that they have a big God and help them to write the correct answers. More than everything, more than all of this, we pray that as they grow, they will know that Jesus is the correct answer. Lord, we pray for our church. As we prepare for big and small events, we look forward to the Mid-Autumn Outreach. Lord, I pray that you will guide the Mid-Autumn Festival Committee, give them guidance and wisdom in the planning and execution. We pray that there will be good participation from our church members, and we pray that you will use our church to shine the light of Jesus brightly. Help us to find joy in serving, and we pray that the people in our neighbourhood will know of the church here and come and feel, feel a difference. We pray that you'll use us, Lord, to share the good, to, to, to bring the gospel to our neighborhood. Lord, as we, end, as we go about our week, help us to remember that you redeem the life of your servants and that those of us who take refuge in you will never be condemned. Give us a strong confidence in the God whom we serve so that as we go about our duties, it will, we will be filled with great joy. And Lord, may this joy be radiant on our faces and be infectious so that we can bring the goodness of Christ to all those around us. All this we pray in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Thank you, Eunice, for leading us in prayer. Uh, First of all, a very, very warm welcome to everyone. And those who are visiting in our midst this morning or that you are new in our midst, we want to especially acknowledge you. I do know that there is uh, Peggy who is uh, visiting us, uh, just uh, happened to be in Singapore. Peggy, can you raise your hand where you are? 
Peggy? Yeah. Hi. Welcome. Yeah. Peggy is from uh, mainland China, so we we'll want to welcome you in the love of the Lord. Yeah? Okay. Uh, the children are joining us uh, 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 in, back in the service because in a short while, uh, we are going to uh, 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 acknowledge all those who are involved in the uh, Sunday School ministry, the teachers and helpers, and we have uh, prepared a, a gift to acknowledge uh, uh, their services uh, and our appreciation of them uh, over the past year in particular. So just bear with us when you see all these children coming in and also uh, their teachers and helpers, yeah? Okay, um, next slide, yeah. So Mid-Autumn Outreach, as was referred to in my message as well as in the press, please use this opportunity to reach out uh, to your loved ones, your friends, as well as those in the neighborhood, and uh, invite them to come uh, with us, bring them here. So maybe 113, you do it in three weeks rather than three years. <laughs> And uh, so you have uh, three weeks uh, to work on this, okay? All right, so next slide. For those who uh, I've uh, been speaking to, please note the Cambodia missions trip. Uh, training begins today at 1.30 in the conference room. And uh, please be punctual so that we can start on time and finish uh, on time as well, okay? Next slide, the tithes and offerings in the usual manner, but uh, can I just uh, find out if all the teachers and helpers are here? They are, huh? Okay, can I invite all the teachers and helpers to stand? And uh, come forward to the front. Yeah, let's, let's put our hands together to appreciate them, yeah? Come. All the teachers and helpers, come, come. Yeah. Come. Okay, come. Come to the front. Come to the front. Uh, face the congregation, please. Yeah. So, at least you know who is responsible for teaching your children the good, the bad, and the ugly. No, I mean just all the good things of the Lord. The goodness of the Lord. Am I right? The goodness of the Lord. Amen? So, do pray for them. Do pray for them. And remember, you know, they are all your unseen, uh, you know, uh, servants of the Lord. Yeah? So... So you know who are teaching your children and, uh, and who are involved in this ministry. I just want to, to, to say a prayer for them before we give them. Audrey and Kay Wei, where are you? Oh, sheesh. Oh. Uh, uh, so can, can she send, these people send a representative to come? A husband also can come. Okay, we'll just pray, all right? Yeah, can we just join our hearts together and stretch your hands out and say a prayer of blessing. Father God, we thank you for these uh, precious uh, servants of yours who have uh, offered their time and their services, uh, some uh, for, for, for decades, literally, and uh, who have faithfully uh, uh, been teaching your children. And I pray, Father, you continue to fill them with uh, the goodness of the Lord in every sense of it, and that they in turn may be able to impart this lot to the children whom they minister to and teach. And I pray, Father, that not only by word, but also by their life, by their example, that they will be a, a good influence, Lord, in the, in the lives of all the young people. And we ask you to continue to bless them with good health, with wisdom, and with strength and favor from you, and that they may continue to faithfully and fruitfully serve you in this ministry. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Okay. I'm going to call your name, and then there's a gift for you, Peggy Ang. Okay, I think I'll come here. Peishi? Peishi? This is a small uh, token of appreciation. Forget. Wow, they all came with thunder. <laughs> no drum roll, but I got thunder. <laughs> Lena. Yay. Yay. Thank you. Big it. Yay. 25 years, is it? 25 years. You know, in Singapore, you go to jail 20 years, it's a life sentence. This is more than a life sentence, you know. Kathy Benton. 
God bless you. Stephanie Chua. Ah, oh, with mommy as well. Well done. Good, 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 good. Smile. Felicia. Yay, come, come, come. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Serene Chua. Yay. Bless you. Jacqueline. Ong oh, Chong. No, here? Yeah? Jacqueline? Oh, yeah, you represent mommy. Uh, this is not Jacqueline, huh? This is the son. Grace Tan? Uh, no, she's not well, so uh, she's not here today. Grace is not here. Yeah. JJ. Hey, thank you. Bless you. Lin Ho. Thank you. Bless you. Elvin Ang. Yay. Hey. Thank you. Bless you. Audrey Chan. Thank you, Audrey. Maggie Teo. Maggie not here. Okay. Charlene Key. Thank you, Charlene. Bless you. Tong Yong? Ah, you can come for your daddy, come. come. Can, 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 one of you. Go, both of you, come. Come, both of you, both of you, both of you. Okay, bless you, huh? Ah, you. you give to daddy, no? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Elaine Lam. Thank you, Elaine. Oh, this one also got drum roll. Enoch, are you here? No. no. I was about to say, you're not what with God. <laughs> Emily Tan? Emily Tan? Not here. James Chan? The name is James Chan. Radiant Chua. Thank you. Bless you. Rachel Lau. Hey, bless you, Rachel. Thank you. Susia? Susia? No, huh? Not yet. Li Hui? Not here, sir. Josephine Ng? Hey, thank you, Joe. Bless you. Zipporah Lau. Yeah, bless you. Well, anyone else? Kei Wei. Yeah. Uh, gone off. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah, she's probably not well. Thank you so much. Praise a lot. No photo. Ah. Oh, oh, come, come, come. Come, take photo. Someone can stand here. Uh, closer, closer. Closer, closer. Can, can have two rows. Ah. Some of you can stand up here. Compress, compress. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, Tong Yong made it. Come. Yeah, can come up the second row. Come. Yeah, two rows, two rows. Come. Ah. Oh, I stand in the middle. Okay. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. We shall not have the uh, tithes and offerings, uh, but let us now stand together to share the peace. Take a quick look around you. You might see a newcomer or somebody you have not been introduced to before. Well, here's an opportunity to get to know each other. Let's say these words together. We are the body of Christ in the one spirit. We were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share the peace Christ each other. Peace with you. Peace with you.
Let's remain standing for the offertory song. Say now the uh, benediction for our online viewers. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. As we continue with the service,